Hello everyone and welcome to the July subscription tasting video. It's already summer and uh, as you may guess, we are going to taste some delicious Kenyan coffees today that we're sending out to all our coffee subscribers around the world. Yes, you heard it right. We do ship around the world with of course a few exceptions. And we also ship to Norway. If you are living in Norway, that's our biggest market. So if you want to subscribe to our coffee, you can subscribe from one to six bags. You can now pause and stop and uh, renew or delete the membership anytime you want. And I pick out the coffees that we send out every month and uh, we ship it out on the first Wednesday of the month. And that means uh, normally during the first week of the month, you will get some freshly roasted coffee in your mailbox. How good is that? pretty good. So today we just uh, got the Kenyan coffees in-house actually. Uh, we just released them as well and uh, it's always a pleasure because summertime it's always hot, nice, you want something refreshing and the Kenyan coffees are indeed very refreshing because they grow a lot of these SL28, SL34 uh, varieties. Uh, you get a lot of this fruitiness and very high acidity that really goes well in the summer and uh, if you want to have it even more refreshing, you can cool this down and drink them as iced coffee. And uh, we have a little tutorial on our YouTube channel on how to make iced coffee, so make sure to check that out. And don't be afraid to add a little bit of sugar or sweetener. Even uh, some people add a little bit of salt into the beverage in order to re remove the, a little bit of the bitterness so you get more of the fruitiness that is kind of more dominant in the flavor. So my favorite is to add a little bit of sugar, believe it or not. <laughs> Cool it down uh, and then drink it, you know, when it's uh, really cold. I don't like to brew it with cold water. We brew it with hot water because we feel that uh, more of the fruity and f floral aromas, they kind of come through better when you use hot water. All right, so to the coffees, we're sending out three different coffees. So if you subscribe to one bag, you will get just the first coffee. And if you subscribe to three bags, you get all three. And if you subscribe to, let's say, five bags, that means you get two of these uh, first two coffees and one of the last coffee. That's kind of how it works. You can also sub subscribe to espresso and filter roasts. They're the same coffees. I actually brewed these coffees on an espresso machine today, believe it or not. And um, I'm kind of like, experimenting a little bit with uh, some brew methods. Uh, and But they are with the same strength as a filter coffee. So that means I've run through quite a lot of water through the coffee and also diluted it. So kind of like a hybrid between making a coffee shot for those of you who know what that is and uh, Americano. It sounds a little strange, but I got it to taste really, really nice. And uh, it's so aromatic when you do it this way. And uh, maybe I'll make a video on that uh, later, but uh, that's not for today. Uh, don't be afraid of experimenting. And I think for me personally, if I'm traveling or at home, I really enjoy making these Kenyan coffees with an AeroPress because you can really get the full potential out. Uh, even if you have a very short brew method like we do in our tutorial uh, that you can check out also in the link below. Or if you do a little bit longer steeping, uh, for instance, um, Mr. Gagne, the Canadian scientist, not scientist, he is a scientist uh, that's written the book um, about physics in coffee. He has a very nice uh, AeroPress recipe that uh, is quite much longer than what we do, but you really get a full bodied flavorful coffee. And when you do that, you extract more of the coffee. So that means you can actually use a little bit less coffee and get more flavor out. Don't be afraid of extracting a lot from these coffees uh, because they are so sweet and uh, very bright and acidic. So the more kind of you extract, the more sweetness comes through. If you think it's a little bit too strong, also don't be afraid to dilute it with clean water. That's also okay. Let's get on with the coffee tasting. So the first coffee we're sending out is actually a kind of an old timer for us, but we haven't had it for a few years. And that is because in Kenya we buy from cooperatives and sometimes uh, the washing stations that also is called factories in Kenya, they uh, select different marketing agents and we're not normally always able to access the samples from each cooperative every year. Sometimes they choose to go and, uh, with another marketing agent that sells through another exporter and uh, if we don't know who it is, we kind of have to do a lot of research to find it. And uh, yeah, it's been a little bit difficult with this particular uh, cooperative. The cooperative I'm talking about is uh, Kapsukisio, and it's located in the west part of uh, Kenya, 
I started buying this coffee many, many years ago. And uh, that's because a good friend of mine in Kenya said like, there is potential in the west of Kenya. It's just uh, nobody's willing to go because it's so far away and nobody's really working with the potential there. So uh, there was a marketing agent who started doing it uh, many years ago called CMS. And uh, I went on a trip with them to visit this cooperative in Mount Elgon. And it's very, very high altitude coffee. And the farms in this area are a little bit different than the ones you find typically in the area. They're a little bit larger in size, still smallholder farms. And they also grow uh, the K7 cultivar more than they do the SL cultivar. So they said when I was there, uh, many, I've been there several times, but they, the farmer said that around maybe 90% of the coffees are the K7 uh, cultivar and not the SL28. So that means around 10% is SL28 and SL34 and 90% is K7, approximately, of course. And that means it gets a little bit different flavor profile, uh, which is very, very interesting. So for me, you know, instead of going to other countries trying to search for this particular flavor here and that particular flavor there, uh, Kenya is one of my favorite coffee countries. I think the quality is exceptional. Even in a bad year, it's pretty good coffees. And also these coffees from the West taste very different from the coffees in the Nyeri area or in the central Kenya um, areas. So that's why I think it's fun to have like different profiles from the same country. So this cup of you, K7 cultivar, let's taste it. It's a bit cold now, but ooh, it's very good when it's cold. And let's top it up a little bit so we can taste it. Uh, I don't like to drink Kenyan coffees when they're really hot, so when they're like lukewarm, I really love it because then you get the fruitiness. Hmm. There's a kind of melted butter aroma that hits me straight away, which I really like in, uh, I find in very complex coffees, normally have this kind of melted butter flavor, but also you have these uh, red fruit characters. I'm not sure if I'm going to describe it f that much for you because all these coffees have a lot of red fruits, whether it's blackcurrant or rose hips or, you know, raspberries or rhubarb or something like that. I'll make it a little bit more up to you to decide. But for me, this maybe has a little bit more of that melted butter flavor. Super kind of complex uh, acidity. It's kind of mouth, it fills the whole mouth and it's a bit whiny and also kind of like fresh fruit, maybe a little bit like stone fruit and red berries. Super nice. Um, think purple berries, that's what I would say. That's uh, all I'm going to say, actually. We have actually been uh, sponsoring this uh, factory or cooperative because they, on, they used to only have one washing station. So one cooperative, one washing station called Kapsukisio. I think they built a second washing station that is under the same umbrella as Capsicisio, but has a different name. But uh, we did sponsor them with the drying beds uh, during our anniversary, uh, I think five, six years ago, we collected money on our anniversary celebration and we decided to send it to Capsicisio because they had serious uh, drying capacity problems. So that, I think they built uh, maybe four or eight beds, like big drying beds of metal also with shade cover. I'm not sure if it, they're still there because I haven't been for a few years, but I would like to go back and see how they're doing because this coffee is exceptional and I'm so happy that it's back. All right, now for the next two coffees. They actually come from the same area, Nyeri. Nyeri is kind of known for being the champagne area of Kenya, uh, but I think that's because a lot of the marketing agents in Kenya and exporters decided to <laughs> work a lot there because it's very close to Nairobi. So they have been putting a lot of energy into training farmers and factories and how to process, growing techniques, all these kind of things, because it's very close to where they work. So um, uh, that's maybe why these coffees are more famous than the one from Mount Elgon, for instance, because to drive to Mount Elgon takes a whole day. It's really, really far. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, I highly recommend going for sure, but uh, it's very, very far. But in the area coffees, they tend to have a lot of complexity and they can be very different from place to place. These factories are, or washing wet mills are not far away from each other, but they do taste quite different. And uh, they normally grow the same cultivars, which is the SL28, some have SL34, some have Batian, some have Ruiru. 
and they all mix them together on the wet mills uh, to kind of bulk uh, process them. And uh, this is one of the reasons why these coffees are so good, because there are big volumes. The smallholder farmers know that they, when they pick ripe cherries, they get potentially a better price for the coffee. So the cherry selection is normally pretty good. And they do normally select uh, cherries before they deliver to the wet mill. And then because you have such big volumes, there's a lot of grading going on throughout the whole process. So when the cherries are depulped, they get graded in water where the gravity takes the floaters away and the heavy cherries sink and go to one channel and then they uh, ferment and then they uh, wash the coffee in these washing channels and by doing so they also grade by gravity so the heavier cherries and uh, beans get uh, to the top of the channel and the lighter beans go downstream. And uh, after that it's delivered to the dry mill where they grade on size and density and everything. So we only buy the double A size, which is the bigger beans, also the densest beans. And that's because I find them to taste much, much, much better than the smaller beans for, sure, for some reason. For instance, in Colombia, we don't find that big of a difference between the larger screens and the smaller screens. But for this particular country and cultivars, I do find uh, it to be quite different. So. That's why we normally just taste the double A's when I'm there and I also taste the AB's of the best coffees just to make sure. You know. Let's taste the second coffee. I'm talking too much today. Wow, so this is more like a, I would say, hoo -hoo. not necessarily a classic Kenyan, but it is a classic Kenyan. It has a lot of this blackcurrant flavor, but also a little bit of this kind of ripe tropical fruits like mango. Mm. Very juicy, super sweet, uh, yeah, just refreshing, juicy, uh, stone fruits, you have uh, berries, mm. really nice, a little bit tart acidity, but uh, for me that's a wonderful thing, I like high acidity coffees, but it's kind of backed up with a lot of sweetness and uh, fruit flavor, so it kind of suits the coffee. A lot of people are afraid of drinking, or when they come to the coffee shop, they say, we don't like high acidity coffee. And then we serve them a Kenyan coffee and they love it. Well, that's a high acidity coffee. But I think uh, many people get confused between acidity and bitterness, for instance, or they mix uh, high acidity with this kind of sour coffee, which might be under extracted or coffee that has been standing on a long time on a thermos or something. That's a different concept. Like acidity is for me, the thing that makes the structure in the coffee and makes it very refreshing to drink. Mm. So Gachatha, very small factory, it's very close to Neri town. And unfortunately, a lot of the farms around are actually uh, kind of disappearing because uh, the city is growing. So you see every year the city is kind of getting closer and closer to the factory. Uh, and that means the factory gets less and less coffee. So. This is a very, very nice factory. They have been working with Nespresso for a while to improve a lot of things. They're doing a lot of experiments with varieties, with the farmers. So uh, I've been buying this coffee for a few years and uh, it's always a pleasure to drink. I think it's very juicy and a super nice coffee. Now for the last coffee, <coughs> which at least when I was in Kenya to select coffees for this year's uh, purchasing, this was the standout on the table, every, on every table. And we actually bought it last year as well. It's also from the area. It's called Kagere. It's a factory that I have yet to visit. I might uh, go and visit next time I go to Kenya. But uh, this was just a super complex coffee uh, when I bought it. And of course, when they land to, in Norway, they, they do change because normally when they're very fresh, the coffees are a little bit closed. It's hard to get the kind of aromatics out. But I know that if they have very high sweetness and a lot of nice acidity, they will turn out really nice when they come to Norway. They kind of open up a little bit, like a wine that needs some air. That's kind of the analogy I like to use. Wow, super complex. I actually get a little bit of vanilla. This is a sample row, so it's maybe a little bit darker than I would prefer myself. But that just adds a lot of complexity to it sometimes. I get vanilla, I get black currants for sure. It's more of this kind of, I call it meaty coffees. It's really like powerful and intense. 
Yeah, like super purple berries, very intense coffee. And um, yeah, just a basket of fruits. That's all I can say. <laughs> cool. So those are the three coffees we're sending out. I really hope you enjoy drinking them. If you want to learn more about Kenyan coffee, there is a very nice blog post written by a guy called Christopher Ferran, uh, where he talks about Kenyan coffee quality not being so nice anymore. Well, I'm not sure if I agree because this year was phenomenal in my opinion. I had a lot of great uh, coffees on the table. Uh, but still, you should read that blog post because it explains a lot how the coffee industry works in Kenya. We'll, we might put a link below. Um, and uh, it makes you understand a little bit more how these kind of dynamics work in Kenya and why Kenyan coffee, both on good and bad, has a very, very good reputation in quality, but also is a little bit behind maybe when it comes to product development in comparing to other countries. For instance, in Colombia, I can work with one farmer where it's a little bit more easy to uh, change things on the farm and everything. But in Kenya, when we buy from cooperatives, we would have to go to you know 500 farms in order to change one thing. So that's a little bit more kind of uh, complex, I would say. But they still produce some of the best coffees in the world, I think. And uh, even in a bad year, but I, in my opinion, and I also talked to Morten upstairs, <laughs> who uh, is working for Nordic Approach, he also came home from Kenya and said, wow, the quality this year was phenomenal. I couldn't agree more. A lot of tropical fruit flavors, stone fruit, berries, really, really intense coffees this year. So I hope you enjoy them in the summer and I hope to see you next month. Thanks, thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe also to the YouTube channel.